Hey Fibernatics, this is Tori from Feathertail Fiber Arts and I am making my much requested how to wash fleece video. Um, in this video I'm going to be showing you my personal way of washing fleece and how I go about that process. So first I'm going to show you my setup. Um, I just use my kitchen, kitchen sink and I have this giant um, roaster pan that I bought at Goodwill like for three dollars about four years ago. This thing is amazing. It holds heat really well. It um, is really big so I can wash a fair amount of fleece in it at one time. Um, I also have a colander in the other side of the sink which I use when I am moving the fleece between um, the rinse and the wash cycle. And then a couple other things that I have for washing. Um, if I'm going to dye the fleece, I would be using Namaste Farms Wash and Dye Wool Shampoo, which is incredible. And if you are planning on preparing your fibers for the dye pot, um, that is what I recommend is just throwing that right in your dye pot with your fiber when you're dyeing it. Um, I also have the lid to the roaster pan and then a spaghetti spoon that I use specifically for um, wool washing and then this little handy tool you can pick up at the dollar store. I love it um, I put it if I'm going to put the fleece right in the sink I always put this underneath it over the drain just so I don't have to worry about um, Any fleece going down my pipes and today I'm gonna be washing this absolutely stunning Corydale fleece from Namaste Farms. Um, I have a pound of it here and it's got some good lanolin in it, so this is going to be a really good example of getting a fleece clean. And um, this is, to be fair, this is a very clean fleece. Um, but it does have lanolin in it, so I will show you how I prep my wool. Okay, so the first thing that I do is I'm going to turn my water on, on my faucet as hot as it will possibly go. And I don't check temperature, but what I do check is if I can't put my hand under the water for any length of time, um, then it's hot enough. And I have um, mom hands, so if I can't put my hands in the water, it is definitely good and hot. So I'm going to turn my water on, fill up my um, roaster pan to about here um, to start with because you'll be surprised once I get that fleece in there how much that water level is gonna go up. So I'm gonna fill it about halfway, and if I do need more water, I can always add more um, after I put the fleece in. Okay, so I have filled my pan a little over halfway with really, really hot water, and now what I'm gonna do is take my Unicorn Power Scour, and I'm going to add a good full pump to the pot. And I'm gonna take my spoon and just kind of stir it around so that it mixes in with all of the water so that there's not just one big spot of soap. Um, one of the reasons that I use Power Scour as opposed to something like Dawn Dish Soap, which I know is another one that um, is used very frequently on wools, is that this is actually um, specifically designed to handle um, protein fibers, whereas Dawn Dish Soap is not. And one of the things that I discovered in using Dawn Dish Soap for a while is that not only did it add kind of a gummy texture to my fleeces, but when I would spin those fleeces afterwards, um, the yarn actually after a while would also start to get really gummy and gross. And that was when, when I switched to using the Unicorn Power Scour, I did not have that problem anymore. So I highly recommend uh, Unicorn is the one that I use when I'm just washing fleece to wash it. If I'm gonna dye the fleece afterwards, then I would use the Namaste Farms um, wash and dye wool shampoo. Um, okay, so I've got that in here with the water and I'm gonna take my Corydale, which is absolutely stunning. I'm so excited to spin this, you guys. Look at those curly, wonderful, crimpy locks. It's amazing. And I'm just gonna gently set the fleece into the water. Now I just filled this with scalding hot water. So one of the things that I learned very quickly early on is the usefulness of a tool like the spoon because I just use it to gently, gently press the wool into the water. I'm not agitating it, I'm being very gentle. Um, one of the things that you'll want to note is what type of fleece you're working with makes a difference. Um, 
washing wool is not a one size fits all uh, process, which is something that I think is really important to note. If I had a long wool, for example, and I was washing that in here, that can handle a lot more agitation than something like a Corydale or a fine wool can. So I'm going to be more careful with this than I would be if I was washing a Lester long wool or a Teeswater or something like that. Okay, so now um, here's a great thing. If, if you're troubleshooting and you realize that, shoot, I didn't put enough water in the, in the pot. So for example, in the pot right now, it's mostly up to the line of the fiber, but it's not really giving the fiber a lot of room which is important because if I want that wool soap to get into the fleece and kind of move around in the fleece, I'm going to need more water. So I'm going to take a cup, make sure my water is as hot as it is in the pot. And I'm just going to gently add water until I feel like the water level is where I want it to be. Now again, if this was a long wool, what I would probably do is take my spaghetti spoon, pull all the fiber away from one side of the pot, and then just add the hot water into the pot from the faucet. And with the Corydale, it's, I mean, it would probably be fine, but I'm just not taking chances, because it's beautiful. And I can already see just in adding the hot water, um, that this fleece is going to be beautifully bright white. Okay, so now I'm gonna just gently press into the water again, and now I can see as I'm pressing that there's a lot more space where the water can travel into the fleece, and I'm just gently pressing down on the wool to get it all saturated. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab my pot lid, put it on top, and I'm gonna let it sit for about 15 minutes. And what this process is doing is it's literally taking that oil off of the fleece and melting it into the water. And the reason you don't wanna leave it too long is because if the water cools down too much, the lanolin will reattach to the fiber and you will have essentially wasted your wash cycle. So I'm gonna put it in the hot water, I'm gonna leave it for 15 minutes, and then we will be back shortly. Okay, we are back 15 minutes later. I'm gonna lift the lid. see um, that it already looks a bit whiter and it's still in kind of the dirty water. So next what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take the fleece out of this pot and move it into the colander on this side of the sink. So depending on my hands can get in and out of there okay, and I just kind of run through and make sure I got everything out of there now because it's winter or really hot water will uh, felt your fleece what you want to be careful of is that you don't want a severe change in temperature from hot to cold so the water that I put back in my pot for the rinse cycle on the Corydale needs to be at the same temperature as the fleece or hotter. So I'm just gonna turn my water on to kind of see, um, and it's definitely cold, er, which is why I never turn it on the fleece to begin with. I'm gonna let that get hotter. Okay, now that it's getting hot, I'm gonna fill up my pan again to about halfway to three quarters. Okay, so I filled up my pot with um, really hot water for the rinse. There is no soap in this. And I'm just gonna take the fleece, look at that, it's absolutely gorgeous, um, and just plop it right back in the water very gently. And then take my spaghetti spoon and gently push it down so it's all saturated. Now, if this were a long wool fleece, one thing that I might do differently, and because this is a finer fleece than a long wool, I don't want to agitate it too much. Um, what I would do differently probably is I would actually take this pot out of my sink 
take the long wool and just um, have it the hot water running and take handfuls about this big gently run it under the water press out run it under the water press out very very gently long wools can handle that kind of um that kind of movement without having too much of a problem obviously if you're if you're rubbing your hands together or you're wringing the fiber then you're going to have problems but if you're just pressing the water out and rinsing it that way it's a lot faster um, I'm not going to cover this this time and I'm only going to leave it in about five or ten minutes so that it has a chance to uh, rinse away any of the residual dirt and soap that may still be in the fleece. So I'm going to um, let that sit for about five to ten minutes and I will be back. Okay, so this has been sitting here for about five to ten minutes now and I'm just going to um, gently scoop it out and put it into the colander. Very hot water. <laughs> okay, and I got everything so now what I'm going to do is just dump that water and you can see how clean it is when I'm dumping it out so that fleece is really nice and clean. Okay. So now I have this colander of fleece and I'm watching the water that comes out of the fleece underneath the colander and it is very clear. There's no dirt or anything in it. When I press down even, there's really no residual dirt and you can see how white and clean that fleece is. Um, so I'm going to get that into the pot. I'm just gonna kinda let it sit and rest for a minute here and then I'm gonna move it to my black pot and I will show you the next step. Okay, for the next step of this, um, I just take my fleece and I put it in a laundry bag like this, drop it into my washer. And then what I'm gonna do is make sure that my washer is set to drain and spin. Um, make sure that is the only setting that you use because if water is added to this in any way, you, were, you are going to felt your fleece. Um, <clears throat> if it's going to agitate and then um, add water to it. So you don't want that. You just want drain and spin. And then I'm going to um, start my washer and let what this um, process does that really helps me is it speeds up my drying process by about half um, because it takes all the excess water out of the fleece before I put it out on the drying racks. So I'm going to let my washing machine do its thing and then we'll go put the fleece out on the rack. Hey guys, okay, so I'm hoping that the quality is okay so you can see. Um, I have a lovely, nice dry basement, which is wonderful in the wintertime for um, drying out wool. So I'm just going to dump out my fleece, which is already pretty, actually it's, it's damp, but not it's actually pretty dry. So that extra spin in the washer really helps it um, lose a lot of that water so it speeds up the drying process. So I just take um, the fleece and kind of shake it out a little bit and get it a little bit unclumped so that it dries out faster. Spread it out over the sweater drying racks. I get these at Shopco. I'm sure you can find them pretty much anywhere. Um, I don't usually, unless I'm um, going to be washing a bunch of fleeces, I don't usually try to cram them on the same sweater rack. I make sure that they both have, that the fleece has a ton of space to air out. So after I'm done with that, and I try not to, to mess with it too much um, while I'm getting it spread out on the racks, you can see how lovely and white that is very excited to be spinning that. Um, then I just have this little oscillating fan that I turn on it, um, but again, that's something that if you can put it outside um, during the summertime, I always put my fleeces out on the back deck so that they can sun dry, which is much nicer and it goes a lot faster. 
So anyway, I hope that this video is helpful for you. Keep an eye on this YouTube channel for more tutorials on different fiber arts topics. And check out our website at feathertailfiberarts.com. And I will talk to you again soon.